you know, I, I do think that when we are talking on October 4th or 3rd or whatever the first weekend of October is going to be, we are doing a lot of like, what is this team? But when we're talking about November, it is about the ramifications and the fallout. And sometimes you, you are, uh, but what does Bud always like to say? There's 12 versions of a team. But like what you are in some of these games end up having way more significance than what you are earlier in the season based on what's happened and based on what it means. Texas was not the best version of Texas against Kansas State. Damn, it was good enough. It was like just good enough to be able to get one huge win, which given everything else that has happened, uh, Oklahoma taking its second conference loss, now all of a sudden you have that inroad right there to be able to make it to the Big 12 championship game, to potentially win the Big 12 championship and be a one-loss team, compete for the college football playoff. Tom, how'd it happen? What what was the most important thing for the Longhorns in this victory? Um, they ended up scoring more points in overtime. <laughs> Which would be important. three. You know, this was I, like it was. This was a crazy, wild game. Texas just started turning the ball over like insane and like you, you know we talked about this during the week i don't know whether it was wednesday or thursday but in this game last year texas jumped off to the big lead kansas state adjusted in the second half and came back very similar thing in this game where texas looked like it was in control in the first half and then in the second half malik murphy wasn't looking like he was playing nearly as well as he had been in the first half the holes that had been there for jonathan brooks started to close up a little bit more and you didn't really see the longhorns having that same kind of success on offense and Kansas state offensively figured some things out, things they could take advantage of. It started doing so. And, you know, it, they came back, the turnovers obviously helped a lot. They were able to force the overtime. And then, you know, the overtime was just a mess for everybody, but Texas at least got a field goal out of it. Look, I, I thought Texas was much more physical than Kansas state, right? They, they were, I thought like they were clearly the better team on the day and the turnovers made this like they, they almost messed up their season with two turnovers in their own end on back-to-back -back drives. Like Texas had this thing. I switched the game off, right? Because there were other like there were a lot of really good games in mm -hmm. this window. And I turned back and said, like, oh shoot, I'm glad we have DVR. I, I need to catch back up on this. Like holy cow. Uh, I for a second I was like you you, you get like the, the score alert right it's like okay like Kansas State score I'm like there's no way they just scored again. They just scored again. Okay, mm -hmm. this is bad. But Texas ran for 230. Okay. What Kansas State run for? 33. 30, yeah. 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 I look, Texas whipped Kansas State along lines of scrimmage. Texas eight tackles for loss. Kansas State three. Zero sacks for Kansas State, three for Texas. If you don't have the turnovers, we're talking about how can't like Kansas State got blown out by Texas. It, it's it's probably a three or four score win if they want to punch one in late. But turnovers matter, and they happen. And that's kind of the risk of when you play a backup quarterback. Like Weird stuff could happen that you you kind of think if yours is in there, maybe it doesn't, right? But I thought this was a great – I mean, the score won't show it, but I thought this was a great win for Texas because the stuff that you needed to show up, for the most part, did. Red zone defense because that defensive line was eating a pretty good offensive line for Kansas State. Like That was big to me. That's kind of what kept them in the ballgame. I thought Kansas State's offensive line has made me rethink Kansas State's offensive line. Or maybe I should be rethinking Texas's defensive line. I think Texas D line's real. Like okay. I think we're going like da -da 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 -da. some like NFL draft guys on that D Murphy, line. sweat. Yeah. Like, you know, you're just gonna maybe. be like, dude, 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 dude. That's what I said on the big game breakdown on Wednesday. It's like outside of BB and uh, the tackle other tackle's name I cannot remember, their offensive line is not good this year. Yeah, and I thought Texas was going to be able to eat him alive in the in the interior, which we kind of saw. But Bud, another to your point, Texas's up red zone offense also helped keep Kansas State in the game, and that has yeah, been a theme for Texas all year long. Like you look at it, Kansas had three red zone possessions, only got you know 14 points out of it. They had the two touchdowns and they missed a field goal. But Texas had four red zone possessions and they only had 13 points. So despite having an extra possession, they finished with fewer points in the red zone than Kansas State did. So like you look at the turnovers, you look at the red zone struggles, and that is what kept Kansas State in this game more than anything. Like Texas did a very good job of that. It would make me so furious the fact that Texas scores all the, the time from 30 and 40 and 54 yards out. 
but then you get them on like third and goal from the seven and they don't have a chance. I, I don't know why it is, but I mean, to your point, um, from the notepad, A.D. Mitchell's just a big game player. It, you know, what is it? Health, availability, doesn't feel like we've gotten full seasons from him throughout his career, both at Georgia and at Texas. What do you have, what, 138 yards or something? Ridiculous here. Two touchdowns. Um, kind of felt like he was the recipient of some of the Steve Sarkeesian, I'm in my bag, scheme me a wide TF open. And, uh, you know, you've got the fourth down play where you, you, you kind of fake the sneak and you pitch it out to C.J. Baxter. Baxter go, goes ahead and get scooting for a 54 yard touchdown that Texas, Texas has dudes, you know, it's not always pretty. I did not think Malik Murphy had a great game. He had a good first half. And then the second half, he was very, very ordinary looking. Yeah. Yeah. I was, uh, I, I will be interested to see uh, how it goes the rest of the way. Get better. Quinn. Did, did he look bang up to you? Did Murphy? Yeah. Okay, Arch Manning, Arch Manning, Arch Manning, Arch Manning, Arch Manning, Arch Manning, Arch Manning. Arch Manning. <laughs> I don't, I don't know, I don't know. I don't, I, I didn't really see him doing anything that made me kind of raise an eyebrow that had me concerned. But again, this was also one of, like you said, one of many games going on in the new window. So I might have missed it because I was also live blogging the banger between Ohio State and Rutgers during this one. I, I know he's not a great runner, but he didn't look twitchy at all. So I, I, I kind of wonder. I. Shark mentioned in the post game how many guys they had who were gutting it out who were really banged up. They lost their right tackle during the game. Yeah. We got 10 or 11 starters out. And if it's a stock, you better buy. We'll get, we'll get to the Tigers later. Um, Tom, I got no looks at Ohio State Rutgers. Aren't you a lucky son of a gun? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, no, that was a CBS. <laughs> no, 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 no. Look, hey, you, you throw me, throw me out there, and you can see, you can see all the Slack comments. You can see all the written production on CBSSports.com. I was just assigned to other games. All right, you know. <laughs> Chip was I on just, Notre Dame, Clemson. Yeah, yeah. I, I was, I was assigned to other games, and Tom Fernelli had it on lock. So, Tom, guide me. Uh, what well, in the world was that? The final score was 35 to 16 Ohio State, but friends, that was a very misleading final score because Ohio State scored a couple touchdowns late to put this one away and make it look better than it was. Um, the simple truth, like to boil this all down as basic as possible, is that Rutgers' defense is legitimately good, and Rutgers' defense did a very good job against Ohio State. The problem for Ohio State is that, and this has been a problem for them a lot this year, Rutgers' entire defensive philosophy is we are just going to keep two safeties back and force you to move down the field because this is the Big Ten, and we don't really face a lot of teams with quarterbacks and wide receivers who are just going to be able to exploit us kind of dropping back most of the time. 